What if legendary Pokemon were normal? That's right, these Pokemon are commonly revered, criticized, but overall made memorable in the Pokemon franchise by the fact that their designs, inspirations, lore, and powers are often incredibly complicated relative to the average Pokemon. Over the years, we have come to know dozens of legendary Pokemon that are somehow ultra-rare, ultra-powerful, or even gods within the pantheon of the Pokemon world. But how would we make these Pokemon memorable if we stripped all of that away? That's the question of the day. Since I am set on redesigning several legendary and mythical Pokemon, not only to look more basic, like the average Pokemon that you wouldn't look twice at, but also making sure their newfound normalcy is justified within the world of Pokemon, that they have a place that fits them in the various early game routes among the Zigzagoons, Starlies, and Scatterbugs of the world. So the process was simple. I narrowed down six categories where we see some of the most plain and uninteresting designs in the franchise, being the Route 1 Bug, Bird, and Normal types, alongside the three starter types in Grass, Fire, and Water. I then looked through a list of every legendary and mythical, picking two that made sense for each category. I then went to my community discord, link in bio, for all of you to vote between these two for which had the most potential to fit in well as an early game Pokemon. These votes were meant to serve as suggestions for me, with the foremost goal being a balance of six Pokemon that would work well together. So I went with a poll winner for all but one category for artistic purposes, and voila! We have a pool of six Pokemon that work together to form something of an early game Pokedex of their own. Three starter Pokemon for you to pick between, alongside the three Pokemon that you would find on this hypothetical Route 1. Hopefully this is a good lesson in simplifying Pokemon designs, so let me know how I did adjusting the art and concepts for these wonderful gods and monsters. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start off today with the standard early root Pokemon before we unveil the starters for this hypothetical concept. One Pokemon that you always find at least by the first forest is the so-called Root 1 bird. Typically this is a normal and flying type, based on some kind of common passerine bird, and can feasibly be seen as a common staple of the region. Unfortunately, the list of flying type legendaries and mythicals are far from common looking. But that's exactly what we're here for today. I ruled out Rayquaza, since a flying snake seems like too much of a departure for this niche, though I would like to commonify the Weather Trio Master in another video someday. Instead, I let you guys vote between Eveltal and Cresselia, essentially two opposite Pokemon in terms of personalities, but both unconventional in terms of their potential as a Route 1 bird. Cresselia would have made a fine duck or baby swan, but Eveltal won out, so it's time to translate this Pokemon into perhaps a simple little raven or crow, while of course making it different from Rookity, which boasts a somewhat territorial and fierce personality. But we can really play it up with this translation of Eveltal, a malevolent, perhaps nocturnal crow Pokemon that lives in the dark forests in the early roots of a certain region. Introducing Volcrow, from Crow, Vol as in malevolent, and Vulture. Volcrow are vengeful and territorial Pokemon that thrive under the cover of darkness. This elusive Pokemon is often found lurking in shadowy forests and abandoned ruins, where it guards its chosen territory with unwavering determination. Despite its diminutive and juvenile state, Volcrow possesses a unique ability to absorb life energy in small quantities, using the mystical properties within its feathers. This stolen vitality sustains it during its developmental stage, granting it enough strength to face the challenges of its dangerous environment. However, it must be cautious not to overindulge, as consuming too much life energy could cause this Pokemon's physical health to decay. Volcro compensates for its lack of raw power with a cunning and fierce sense of territoriality. It will fiercely defend its chosen habitat against any perceived threats, emitting eerie calls that send shivers down the spines of intruders. Those who dare to challenge Volcro will experience its wrath as it employs clever strategies and uses its sharp beak and talons to deliver swift but retaliatory strikes. Trainers seeking to capture a Volcrow should approach it with caution and respect its independence. Next, we make our way into the first forest of the game, where you would find a sneaky bug-type Pokemon scuttling about on the forest floor. Honestly, the pool of legendary bugs was not a pool at all, since to this day there is technically no legendary bug. All we've got is the mythical Pokemon Genesect, plus the Ultra Beast Buzzwool, but that's pushing the envelope for what constitutes a legendary quite a bit. Still, I ran this poll for you guys and you decided on Genesect. 
As sad as I might be that I can't make a wimpy little mosquito Pokemon, I actually had the best idea for this Genesect spin. Since the concept of this video is essentially de-extremifying these legendary concepts, what's the opposite of millions of years of an apex predator DNA genetically modified to fit into a murder robot? Well, how about a friendly little robot? And what's friendlier than a good old Roomba? The way these little guys scuttle around a house and pick up debris almost reminds me of a beetle or a cockroach eating detritus on a forest floor. Plus, we have already seen Genesect essentially take the form of a Roomba in the anime where it can apparently fold up into a disc and fly like a UFO. Who knew? Plus, incorporating this household vacuum robot inspiration is just about the only way we can justify this Pokemon steel typing on such a basic Pokemon. Without further ado, I present Vroombug, the beetle Pokemon. Vroombug is a remarkable Pokemon that adapts to various habitats, from dense forests to urban areas. It roams tirelessly, seeking out debris and detritus to clean up. Its integrated robotic vacuum system sucks up any unwanted debris that it comes across, leaving the environment pristine and spotless. With its compact insectoid limbs, Vroombug moves swiftly and gracefully, darting around with precision. Its built-in sensors allow it to detect even the tiniest specks of organic waste, making it a perfectionist when it comes to cleanliness. Its antenna emit powerful signals that will help it communicate with other Vroombug in its vicinity coordinating their efforts for large-scale cleaning operations. Vroombug's most fascinating feature is in its ability to assimilate discarded metal scraps and adapt them for various purposes. It incorporates these materials into its exoskeleton, enhancing its durability and granting it unique defensive capabilities. Depending on what it picks up, it will store it in its body, and upon evolution, this waste will be converted into a concentrated blast of energy used for defense. Finally, let's round out this first trio with the most fluid category, the Route 1 Normal type. I mean fluid because formerly this group was solely inhabited by rodent-like mammals, but even since the start it's been a wide mix of rats, ferrets, pigs, raccoons, and even meerkats, I think. So pretty much any mammal like Pokemon will do. That's why I had you guys vote between the Hedgehog Shaman and the Deer Xerneas. Honestly, I am so happy that Xerneas won. Not only because Shaman is already quite plain and could pass as a common Pokemon, but because I think Xerneas being a fairy type lends itself well to translation into a fairly standard normal type Pokemon. Introducing Faunora, the Faun Pokemon. This Pokemon is commonly found in peaceful forests and meadows, where it spends its days exploring and learning about the world around it. Faunora's small and nimble hooves allow it to move gracefully through its natural habitat and it often prances and leaps playfully among the flowers and the tall grass. It has a remarkable sense of empathy and can sense the emotions of other Pokemon and humans. It uses this ability to bring comfort and solace to those in need. When it encounters someone feeling down or distressed, Faunora will approach them with gentle nudges and affectionate gestures, offering comfort and support. Faunora is a symbol of purity and innocence, radiating a calming aura that has a soothing effect on those around it. Its presence in the forest brings a sense of tranquility, and it is often seen surrounded by smaller Pokemon seeking its guidance and protection. Now this next one was somewhat of an easy decision as well. I ran a poll asking you guys to decide between the final choices for the grass starter, with a majority of you asking that I pick Virizion over Zarud. Understandable, considering that we already have not one, but two grass monkeys in the franchise, one of them being a starter. We just made a deer Pokemon with Xerneas' common form, but Virizion will be a nice translation as we create a very typical grass starter. Calm, gentle, and of course covered in foliage. Turning Virizion into also somewhat of a straightforward deer will also be an excellent way to make this abstract inspiration more common and realistic for a starter Pokemon. With all that said, let's meet Verdeer, the foliage Pokemon. Verdeer is often found in lush meadows and forests where it spends its time exploring the wonders of nature. Its verdant green coat of leaves and vines blend seamlessly with its surroundings, allowing it to move unnoticed and observe its environment without disturbing the balance of the ecosystem. This Pokemon also possesses remarkable speed and agility, gracefully leaping through the treetops and bounding about fields. Its sharp, leaf-like horns on its head not only add to the elegant appearance, but also serve as a means of defense. When threatened, Verdeer can swiftly dodge incoming attacks and counter with swift strikes from its leafy appendages. Verdeer have a deep connection with nature, often channeling their energy to promote growth and heal wounded plants and Pokemon. 
It emits a calming aura that brings tranquility to its surroundings, and its presence is said to encourage the flourishing of plant life and its habitat. Trainers who choose Verdir as their starter Pokémon find a loyal and resilient companion. Verdir's noble spirit drives it to protect its trainer and friends, making it an invaluable ally in their journey. Its calm and patient demeanor makes it an excellent mediator, bringing harmony and balance to conflicts within a team. Next, let's turn to the fire starter, and the one that I was most excited about translating for this video. I ran a poll to decide between Entei and Heatran, and I am so happy that Heatran won out, giving us the potential for a non-quadrupedal Pokémon, alongside a bit of a challenge when deciphering what this Pokémon is based on, and thus how to make it common. I decided that we could easily make Heatran perhaps some kind of toad or frog, just based on visual similarities. It is, after all, one of the vaguest legendaries ever, so the direction that we take is pretty limitless. Introducing Magmode, the bullfrog Pokémon. Magmode inhabits volcanic regions and is known for its affinity to magma. It has the unique ability to store and manipulate molten lava within its stomach and cheek pouches, allowing it to unleash powerful fire-based attacks. When Magmode belches, it releases jets of scorching hot flames that can incinerate even the toughest of opponents. This Pokémon has a mischievous streak and enjoys playful interactions with its trainers and fellow Pokémon. It has a habit of playfully puffing up its cheeks, filled with seething magma, then releasing small bursts of fire as if it were blowing kisses. Despite its playful nature, Magmode is fiercely loyal and will defend its trainer and friends as if they are in danger. Magmode's body is covered in a thick, heat-resistant skin that protects it from its fiery environment. It can withstand extreme temperatures and is even capable of swimming through lava with ease. Though short, its powerful hind legs allow it to leap great distances, both for evasion and surprise attacks. Last but not least, it's time for the Water Starter, the one with plenty of options when you look at how many Water-type legendaries there are. But the one that I narrowed it down to were Suicune and Keldeo. Keldeo had an overwhelming victory in the poll, and I think I understand why. This Pokémon has been sorely neglected by Game Freak and needs some kind of further representation in some form or another. It's also quite adorable and unique for a mythical, given that it almost looks like a starter already, but it's for that reason that I didn't pick it, ignoring the democratic process. Plus, consider the fact that this would have been the third hooved animal in the set of six, so it felt a bit repetitive. I know, I know, but there's plenty of time for Keldeo in the future. So let's turn to Suicune. This Pokémon is based off of quite a few things, potentially canines, felines, and East Asian mythical creatures. But I decided to hone in on those feline traits and create a very adorable snow leopard, especially given Suicune's ties to northern lights and ice. It seemed too perfect. Its patterns and details would work well to give it spotted coating, like a beautiful snow leopard which we didn't really have until Chin Pao in Generation 9, and even then we don't really have a real one, since, you know, it's made out of snow, or swords, maybe a little bit of both. But anyway, to complete this set of mythical Pokémon, turned into common Pokémon, I give you Floleo, the River Cat Pokémon. Floleo tends to be shy and mistrustful, often preferring solitude and observing its surroundings from a distance. It is known for its elusive nature, skillfully blending into its wintry environment, making it challenging to spot. When approached by strangers or other Pokémon, Floleo may display a wary and cautious behavior. This Pokémon thrives in the icy landscapes, snowy peaks, and frozen rivers of mountainous regions. It effortlessly glides across these frozen terrains, leaving behind almost no trace of its presence due to its delicate paws. Its keen eyesight allows it to spot potential threats or prey from great distances aiding it in its survival. Floleo's connection to water is subtle yet evident, and its ability to create small rivulets and channels that mimic the gentle flow of a peaceful brook. Although its water-based powers are not as formidable as more advanced Pokémon, Floleo can produce small waves and manipulate water with finesse when it feels comfortable. These small streams can be used as a source of fresh spring water, a vital source of life to anyone venturing in these ice-capped landscapes. Due to its cautious nature, Floleo is reticent about forming close bonds with trainers or other Pokémon. It takes time and patience to gain its trust, and once it does, it will form a bond, becoming fiercely loyal and protective. And just like that, we have created three early root Pokémon and three original starters, all inspired by various legends and mythicals of the Pokémon world. 
Did I do a sufficient job of narrowing down these Pokemon's attributes to the essentials and making them fit in with the likes of Zigzagoon, Pidgey, or Chimchar? Or are these Pokemon fundamentally too special and complex to turn into staple Pokemon? Let me know down below in the comments. Especially let me know what starter of these three that you would pick and which early game ones you'd add to your team. Thanks to my patrons, especially Guardian patron Dayton Wheezy for making videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time for more content.